I want to take a minute and talk a little bit about the thoracolumbar fascia. Sometimes we'll hear the thoracolumbar fascia referred to as the lumbodorsal fascia. And it consists of three layers of, of a fairly thick fascial connection. And we can, we can look at those in terms of the posterior thoracolumbar fascia, the middle thoracolumbar fascia, and the anterior thoracolumbar fascia. When I look at the attachments for the posterior layer, it really gives rise to the latissimus dorsi, runs continuously with the inferior tendinous border of the splenius capitis, and the lower fibers of the splenius cervicis, so which are, are deep to the uh, lower trap. That posterior layer runs caudally and blends with the sacrum and the ilium, and the fascia will continue to run diagonally and intersect with the contralateral gluteus maximus. The deeper fibers of the posterior surface are, are continuous with the sacrotuberous ligament. They're connected to the posterior superior iliac spine, and they run along the posterior sacroiliac ligament. The posterior layer also travels, lateral, travels laterally over the erector spinae and forms the lateral raphi. right at the lateral aspect of the erector spinae. So the lateral raphi is here. Now arriving, arising from the lateral raphi are the transverse abdominis here and the internal oblique here. So connecting to the lateral raphi the, and the posterior fascia is the deeper abdominal muscles. Attaching to the, to the posterior fascia that also is the latissimus dorsi. And then contained between the anterior layer and the middle layer is the quadratus lumborum muscle. The quadratus lumborum muscle attaches to the 12th rib superiorly and, and the uh, posterior superior iliac spine inferiorly and, at, and functions to elevate the, the hip or, or perform that hip hike motion. Sometimes we'll think of the quadratus lumborum as a, an accessory breathing muscle and you'll see that muscle spasm in people that have acute back pain and they'll those people that kind of look like they have a lateral shift um, or a lateral side bent position to try to, to um, decrease the, the, or that are shifted towards their painful side. Now the thing that's interesting with the middle layer and the posterior layer is that they completely envelop this erector spinae group, including the multifidi, which would, would right here. Now, when I look at the anterior fascia and the middle fascia, we can see that it blends, again, containing the, the um, quadratus lumborum and attaching directly to the transverse process of the, of the vertebrae. It also blends with the intertransverse ligaments, so the small ligaments that go from transverse process to transverse process. So when I look at the function, I can see that when we have tension that is generated by the, the internal oblique and the transverse abdominus muscles, we can see that, that the lateral raphi are pulled and tension is then developed on the transverse process, the corresponding fascia, and compression is generated within the muscle. 
So it increases spinal stiffness. And we can kind of, some authors um, will look at this idea of, of the anterior portion of the thoracal lumbar fascia as being more passive and the posterior layer as being more active. So the passive part serves to transmit tension that's produced by the con contraction of the hip extensors to the spinous processes whereas the active portion is activated by a contraction of the abdominals, the internal obliques and the transverse abdominis, which then in turn tightens the fascia. So we, we get that fascial tension being transmitted longitudinally from, you know, to the, kind of to the tips of the spinous processes. So that transmission of force compressing the erector spinae helps the, the uh, spinal extensor muscles apply tension and resist loads. And it allows us to visualize how our contralateral or the force from our, our glute generating lower extremity loads can then be transmitted contralaterally to the um, through the opposite side of latissimus, and that's where we start to see the load transmitting from a right hip to a left shoulder. So that's the the thoracolumbar lumbar fascia, as we can um, s start to appreciate how it functionally drives spinal stability by enveloping those spine extensors in the layers and connecting the transverse abdominis and the internal oblique um, to provide that stability all the way around in a corset fashion.